All right, I, we are now recording. All right. So one of the things that I saw in today's, so yes, we're, we're basically at the conversation of, hey, can we finally clean up catalog um, from a purely from a spec perspective in that today it's listed in a spec and it's, and it's listed in such a way that it's required to be OCI compliant would be you'd have to implement the catalog API. And I speak from it from a service that actually did implement it, at least you know partially, um, but recognizing that not everybody has been able to implement it uh, because of some of the, I don't even want to get into why they have didn't implement it. It's not really that important for the purpose of the conversation. The point is that there's a number of registries that haven't and won't in its current spec. So if to get to a 1.0 so we can actually release the spec and then ask registries to be compliant, we probably, I've heard we need to come up with some tests for registries as well. Um, let's remove the things that we know are just going to be failures if we try to require companies to do it. Um, not, not suggesting there is a gap we need to fill. Um, and that's why we have a separate conversation that says, what should the replacement to the catalog API be? We know there's a need, but clearly registries have survived without consistently implementing catalog to date. Let's get the 1.0 out and then focus on 2.0 or 1.5 or whatever you want to call it. The PR was interesting because in order for the, I focused on removing catalog. I am curious and, and specifically to, uh, I believe Derek and John and, um, and Mike and others, I guess I just happen to know those names that were involved with it. Is tag listing part of what you guys call catalog? Because I, spent a oh. bunch of time trying to maintain the tag listing API with that and remove catalog. Tag listing is different than catalog. I mean, yes. tag listing yes. is, is just to see which tags are in a specific repository. So if you do like a Docker pull all, it will use that, but catalog isn't used by any client. It's really oh, so pull all actually uses tag listing. Yeah, it would. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, so not only is it convenient, it's actually part of the clients that you say. So I'm assuming, I didn't actually check. Do all, I assume all registries then support um, tag the tag listing API? Really depends on what you mean by all, but I think most, um, yeah. <laughs> okay, fair enough. Do you, does GCR? GCR does, yeah. Okay. Um, and obviously Docker Hub does. Uh, okay, so that was the only thing that I, uh, Vincent's response made me think, where is I supposed to remove uh, uh, tag listing as well, but I'm glad I didn't. So the diff looks confusing, as I put in the notes today, because the tag listing API was saying, it, here's the superset of uniqueness compared to catalog, such as paging and other stuff. So right. once I moved catalog, I had to move that content to the other. And the way GitHub shows the diff is, does look very confusing. Um, it, yeah, I'm trying to look at it locally, but it's not too much less confusing. <laughs> I think if you just look at the end result, that's probably the best way to do it. Um, and then you could see, all right, oh yeah, catalog says it's reserved and here's all the details on how to do tag listing. And the, the stuff around paging that was that was then thus removed is actually in tag listing. So it is a complete set. So unless there is something else other than me wrestling with the, the good old sign off pieces, is there anything left for us to just close that out? I don't think so. I think we just need to review it. Okay. Yeah, it just needs some reviews. I, I've looked at it before, and I, I skimmed it this morning. It, it still looks good to me. So all, okay. the, all the issues I had were addressed. So. Okay, so I guess we can just, I mean, honestly, this wasn't even one that I was, like, super passionate about. I just raised my hand and took ownership for finishing it up because Alexi had, um, I guess, is just busy with other stuff. Uh, so if we can just get some LGTMs, I will go wrestle the signing monster for squashing those uh, and fixing up the missing signature on it so it gets a nice little 
checkbox instead of the red X. Right. And for the audio, I think it's, it's important to recognize that the, the catalog API is reserved, as you say here in the PR, for historical usage. Registr registries may implement the catalog, but are not required. Right. So it's just an optional thing. And we're not going to specify it in the spec. Yeah, it. the word optional is actually interesting because when you say optional, it makes it sound like there's a, um, a spec that says here's how it'll run it. Basically, we're saying is we're not even going to have anything that says how it gets in, but we're just saying that underscore catalog, you know, API is reserved so that anything new we come up with won't clobber over anything that registries have already done. That was the that we were doing, right? Yeah, and I mean, you you could you could literally add a little more text there saying where the catalog, you know, API was specified, where it currently is in Docker distribution, but. At this point, I mean, it's not that necessary. We, we need to remove this out. We can clean it up later I mean, with a, a follow-up PR unless somebody wants to uh, hold, hold up this PR. It's trying to move along with the, uh, with the spec, I think. Any registry that didn't implement it already, what I would hope is instead of spend time implementing something we know is incomplete, to help us design a new one. <laughs> so. Right. I almost don't want to promote, just personally thinking it through, I almost don't want to promote, here's the old one. I would just say, hey, it's gone. If you're trying to think about it, please yeah, help with true. the new one. Yeah, it's that, right. That's an issue for clients who want to implement the original API, right? Yeah. The full API so they can say, yeah, we support the Docker registry as, you know, and clients as is, which isn't really what this spec is about. Although it, the spec does, you know, import the API from Docker distribution. Or, you know, V2, whatever. It's not. It, it's not meant to be a you know a perfect reflection of what's there, right? You okay with that, Derek? Yeah, yeah. I think that's fine the way it's worded. Oh, hey, we got Steve Lasker. Oh, I'm sorry. I, I thought it was the other Steve. <laughs> Never mind, Steve. Oh, Stephen. Steve. Um, cool. All right, so what's, is, there, is this something we need to vote or is it just a couple of LGTMs? I think it'd be nice to ask everybody on the call if anybody's got a, you know, an objection to it while we're here. I think we already discussed the, the higher level part of whether or not we should remove it. Um, it's just a matter of just getting the PR in. Uh, we can we can have yeah. we can have a majority review it though that's not a problem. So that works. Right. Okay. Um, if we can do whatever you guys do for LGTMs, I will make sure the next day or two that I block some time to squash and fix the signing issue. Cool. Um, moving on. The next one was the stuff we've been making progress with artifacts. Um, I went back and after talking with Mike and some others, um, my approach to try to do an incremental uh, set of PRs uh, was grandiose in vision and complete failure in implementation. Um, it just became more complex than it meant to be. Uh, one of the things that, so what I was trying to do is just do incremental things. Hey, let's approve this, get that out, let people get started. Um, such as the things like, what is it, what do we actually need to create a new artifact? Like what, you know, we've said we want to do media types. Um, what we did do is we did go and do a vote uh, very specific on a clarification uh, for media types. Um, and we did get an act on everybody on that. Um, so that one was an issue of clarification that's been solved and closed. So then what I did was I moved on uh, and what uh, we were talking about is realizing that we actually do need a version spec for this because there will be things that will change over time. So for instance, the most, uh, the, the biggest conversation has been around uh, the things that CNAB needs because CNAB is index based and index does not have the same media type that we're using at manifest to be able to delineate what the manifest represents. Uh, because in the artifact world, a man, an index can be used for 
a collection of artifacts that actually itself is a meaning. In this case, a CNAB. It's not just a multi-plot uh, pivot on artifacts. So uh, because that is in the image spec, the, the index manifest, we did the approach that I wanted to get out for artifacts one uh, is what, what can we do with the image spec and distribution spec and manifest specs that are already in place to unblock um, singularity, you know, like uh, home and so forth. Right. So basically you're saying you're going to, the, the versioning inside of artifacts should probably mirror the, the image spec. Um, it'll probably have to be a delta between image and distribution, honestly. Um, I can very easily see in the future that in a future version of artifacts, we will uh, pull in, here's how you call the search APIs. Here's okay. how you call, you know, eventing and so forth. Okay. So that is something that's on the distribution spec, not the image spec. So, so then not mirror, but dependencies. Dependence, yeah. So you might say that 1.0 of the artifact spec is dependent on 1.0 of both uh, image and distribution, but let's just say image spec is fine, but we do get search APIs and eventing and even metadata into distribution spec. So the artifact 2.0 spec would be dependent on um, 2.0 of distribution, but because artifacts just has lots of different artifacts in it, the 1.0 of the image, like any container image that follows the 1.0 spec would still work. And, we don't need a change there uh, because container images already has what it needs from index. It's yeah. artifacts that needs 2.0 of the, or right. 1N. Like, like, the, like the config stuff. So we'll, we'll push our pull requests to those dependencies. When they get them accepted, we'll then move up. All right. 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 That makes sense. As long as we don't do a recursive dependency, we will be in good shape, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you, you mentioned the config stuff. Is, is there going to be a pull request open to the image spec to add the config? I, I saw some stuff a few months ago about it, but I didn't see a PR. So um, I've been talking with Radu and some of the CNAB folks about it, and I think we have a general idea of what we want to do. But to, I think it was you specifically and a bunch of others were bringing up a bunch of good questions. Um, it needs more thought. And rather than try to have too many plates spinning, I was trying to get the Artifacts 1.0 landed so that we have a stable point to then say, okay, we now have that thought through. It's, it works well. We've got a couple of different types. I know one of the other registries is also gonna be adding Artifact type support. Um, so we need to close, for instance, on what exactly do we want to do about the media types? And I'm not talking about that we use uh, manifest config media type, but I know there's been a, uh, some conversations around what is the um, formatting of it to address compression and others. And honestly, the other one I'm kind of waiting for you guys to start poking on is, I don't know if I'm really thrilled with the global uniqueness of uh, applications slash VND dot something something uh, V1 plus JSON. Like, I, I, there's more than one Steve Lasker in the world. There's more than, I don't know how many Microsofts are there in the world, but I'm a little, so my point is, is that I, I think we wanted to, unless we get more people, this is always the problem, is we have the same number of people trying to take on more projects in addition to our day jobs. My approach has been, let's get this thought out for manifest level artifacts and get distribution out. And then we could come back and do the next level of iteration on the index spec on what we need to support things like CNAB and others. That sounds fair. And then what do, you, what do you think about the uh, the plus encryption stuff? You, you, you guys okay then with using on the V1 um, annotations, for example, to to say that, you know, this thing is in, how this is encrypted, this particular image? I think that, or artifact, you think that'll work? I, my, I'm about to get cut off. I'm going to get my uh, charger, sorry.
Mike, are, are you, uh, just to make sure I understand that last comment, are you saying as opposed to the current, their current proposal to add directly to the image spec, those definitions? No, not, not, no, I didn't mean as opposed to, no, I meant following oh, that. Okay. okay, yep. I, I was sort of, you know, hinting that they're, the pattern they're, t they're talking about using at the, on the image should also work on the manifest. Yep, got it. Which is basically, you know, just spam the annotations until we have a, a real answer, right? And then deprecate the annotations. I hate using the word spam, but I think you know what I meant. Use. Yep. From the point of the, the media type, we just need to know that it's encrypted, like how, right. whether it's through annotations or through some other mechanism, uh, doesn't really matter too much. It's just from like a processing perspective, you have to differentiate that type as as right, yeah, right, exactly, Derek. That's not what I, I wasn't talking about. The is it encrypted or not? I was talking about the okay, once you know it's encrypted, how do you write a plugin that can take something that's encrypted and decrypt it? You need the annotations to, to set that up, it, which means you need the tooling to support it, right? Yeah, it's tricky, but... it's tricky, man. That moment when you realize that was a really stupid decision to leave your power supply at home and had to dismantle your desk. <laughs> okay, where did I leave off or did you guys move on? You're talking about the compression stuff. Yeah, we we were just summarizing that it, it's a, if we're going to, you know, stick with the, um, the current specification as is, we can, we can probably just, you know, live with, um, you know, modifying the mime type slightly to, you know, add like plus encryption and then um, use annotations um, in the tooling to, to make it work. And that's just an example. Same thing for compression. Right? Derek, you're the one that had a bunch of comments on this, right? Or is it you or John? Can't remember. So I, I think, from my perspective, I, I was I, I think it's per media, sorry, per artifact, you know, based on the media type, for them to decide what they want to do in that client. Right. So if uh, Docker, sorry, if the containers in Docker want to do a certain thing on that artifact type, great. And if Helm wants to do something slightly different, that's great. They may or may not do compression and even to the fun stuff you talked about over the wire versus storage compression. The piece from a artifact spec perspective is I would love to see some you know, guidance that says, here's what we want to do so that as artifact authors come up, like the singularity folks, like just tell me what I'm supposed to do here, please. They want to get focused on their thing. Right, and if we can use the image spec as a pattern, then, then they, can, they can replicate that across the other artifact types in the V10 version of this artifact spec, right? Right, because we're kind of inserting artifacts in the middle. We're kind of saying that image spec is an implementation of an artifact. So whatever you guys decide, I can just lift that up, or, or honestly, anybody can do the PR, and we'll just put that in the artifact definition, and then image spec just implements a specific thing and yeah I please if there's a pattern that we should follow um, there's clearly much more thought process put in there that we'd like to just generalize for anybody building anything else because honestly other than VMs I don't know what else could be as big as the range of images that we see in the sense of the complexity of what we want to do for layers and compression and so forth So I don't remember if that was John or Derek that was 
turning on ideas there. I'm kind of looking for somebody else to say what we should do and then you know do the PR directly and incorporate it. Um, so I'm reviewing, you're talking about PR 13. That's a big one. PR 13 on distribution spec? On artifacts. Oh, on artifacts. Oh, hold on, let me pull that up. So 13. Oh, okay, so no, that, that's a good point. So you, you stepped into the other part. No, I was actually more referring to, actually don't remember where, I think there was a conversation on image spec, wasn't there? And then we were talking about and uh, putting it into artifact spec. Yeah, there's a really old discussion on there. I didn't read through it. It looked pretty outdated. If, I don't know if it still is. I mean, if it is, it should just close it or update it. From the artifact spec, I'm actually just saying there is a pattern by which people should follow. And I'm looking for some clarification from whatever you guys want to do in image spec. I think to your point, we want to follow. Um, I'm trying to bucket that before I get into 13 versus the other uh, PRs that are there. So if somebody wants to take on a little more detail on how we want to deal with uh, the types, and there was also some questions as why is it V1 plus, you know, uh, JSON or others, you know, or is it, that's one set of conversations, I almost think about the right side of the media type. And then I'm hoping to get more conversation, what do we want about, what, how do we want to do the uh, globally unique portion of the media type to make sure that the uh, pick a name of a company you think there might be multiples of um, because there'll be multiple industries that are going to be using containers. Um, so you have Acme rockets and Acme glass and all that kind of fun stuff. So, so I, I posted in the chat, um, a link to the, I think, what I believe is the, the PR or on the image back. We had a good long talk and, and he, he put together this, you know, this, this outline it, it, only six hours ago though. So he, I'm oh, sure nobody's cool. had a chance to get a look at that. And I, I think this, this, I think this should pretty much outline, you know, how, you could do encryption, and which is similar to compression, you know, that, that sort of thing. Some, something to take a look at. It, it might help in putting that together. Okay. Okay, so moving on to the next one, which uh, Derek was kind of mentioning, spec, uh, PR 13. So what you're seeing there is, if you look at the list of PRs under artifacts, um, everything up to the top one that says artifact spec, was the incremental approach. Um, artifact spec, that PR, is the kind of the reset. So what I've gone back there is said, all right, we are gonna have a version spec. I am gonna put the things that are very specific to the actual spec. Like here is how we, that you use media types to delineate the type. Here's the format for how you write a media type. That a media type uh, for an art, for a manifest has a collection of layers that then themselves can have unique media types. Um, I think I'm trying to think of some other stuff that's in there. There's some stuff that came up. Uh, Cormac um, did a PR on Oras saying that Docker Hub was, uh, should be now supportive. And when I poked at it, I realized that he had part of the stuff there. And I realized that the spec does not say, for instance, that the config object can be null. So I wasn't able to push a manifest to Docker Hub that had a null config object. It needed a, a meta type, but the object itself, uh, if I didn't provide one, uh, would fail. It also didn't support anything other than the OCI image media type, which also means that if we only do that, then the OCI image, and every container scanner that's trying to scan those is going to find other artifacts and fail because they're not an actual um, container image. So those are some things that I need to add to the spec portion. And I did that, I think it was last week ago. And then once we can get some churn on that one, then I'll go back and refactor these other PRs. In fact, I'll probably I'll just, you guys tell me, maybe I'll just close these PRs, but uh, the registry operators how-to guide and Arthur, an artifact author's how-to guide and then how to 
Um, oh, that's actually in the artifact. So if you want to uh, publish your well-known type, uh, that was, that's actually in the artifact author's how-to guide. I, I see how I did that. So I will update these two other PRs for seven and uh, six, but if I can get some eyes on 13, that, that would be uh, most helpful to uh, continue to build upon. We'll, we'll do, thanks. Looks, it looks pretty good, actually. But lo lots of review. Okay. But th that's okay. Um, and then, I don't know, any other conversation you guys you know, took the time to join today? What, you know, what other feedback thoughts do you guys have that we should um, incorporate? I'm dying to know who Wonder Frog is. Hey, Steve, that's Casey from JFrog. How are you doing? Oh, hey, Casey. I had a guess. I wasn't sure. <laughs> yeah, how's it going? All right. Yeah, I mean, you know, we've been talking amongst, you know, Google, uh, AWS, us, even Harbor. Um, I've been wanting to hear from you guys also what you guys think about uh, the approach. Yeah, I was going to say, I know that um, Kit's put some thought behind it. We also passed it past Yoav, our CTO. Um, we've got a couple things, and I'd love to catch up with you offline and just kind of go over things. But, uh, yeah, I mean, so far for, for a first stab, it's looking good. I think we need to get a little deeper into it. Um, I'll tell you, we just kind of looked at some of your documentations and some of your write-ups. But, um, but yeah, from, a, from an initial glance, looks good. Awesome. If it so, helped any, sorry, was somebody else going to say something? Yeah, I was just going to query you a bit on the on the various types, right? Um, are you then, from that perspective, expecting uh, a PR in Docker distribution to allow for the the parsing of additional types? Yep. Okay. Um, because you know, obviously, there's there's code inside of distribution that does validation and normalization and knows what what to do with these types. It's not you know. Oh, so that's a good point. And I think I have to have to go back and check because that was one of the things that made me realize more about it uh, in talking to Justin was, and I need to put it into the spec. So the spec is not ready to be accepted. I just, but I definitely need eyes uh, yeah. is I need to add some clarifications um, that the way we're proposing artifacts and I, and I, I'll double check, but I'm pretty sure the spec distribution spec does not require registries to validate um, media types that come in or the config object because the whole approach that I'm trying to do here and it, and it worked out well with CNAB actually is um, the config object can is an optional thing for artifact authors to use if they're really simple they don't need one but if they need additional configuration information on how the artifact should be processed by its tooling then it's a great place to put it because the config object can be pulled separate from the layers, it can decide, and let's, let's take Docker for instance, right? I have a, a media type, sorry, I have a, an artifact that is a, an image, and, but it could be a Windows or Linux image. And the way I run it, I may not actually, I may have to send those layers to another node or another host, and the host might be different for Windows or for Linux. Yeah. Um, so by having that information or even get to layers as a consumer of pulling something out of the registry, I can pull the manifest and figure out things that I want to do and then say, hey, nodes, go do this with the layers. Um, CNAB wanted to store some, uh, actually I'm trying to remember what they put in it, but they had a bunch of stuff that they put in the uh, config object because sticking them in annotations is kind of just messy. Um, annotations are not, you know, they're, they're optional. They're great. They're great for what I suggest is search information and other uh, types of information. In fact, I, I wrote a blog post to try to help put some thoughts on, on it. But having a config object per artifact is a really awesome capability of distribution spec um, or image spec, whichever you want to call them, both, that can be leveraged. But and the approach here that we're trying to do is from a registry operator, I should have to know almost nothing 
about the artifact types that get submitted to a registry. Um, I don't need to go to Windows or the Linux Foundation to store different extensions on the file system, you know, that's uh, by those. We did want to, well, that's actually a good analogy, but there is a way for me to tell the host OS, by the way, when I am putting this file here, here's the icon to show for this extension, um, for instance. So there is a portion of the other PRs, it's not in the spec yet, but it's in the other PRs if you want to look at it, on what an artifact author would submit that says, hey, this long string media type, which is not human, meant to be human readable from a consumer, maps to this localized string that says Helm or whatever Helm is spelled in other languages. Um, and here's the icon associated with it. So if the other, and the other piece I'll add to it is, as a registry operator, I don't think we want to say from a distribution spec that every registry must have media types open-ended and collect a bag of junk. I'll just put it as their perspective. Um, they might want to say, I'm only going to allow things that I know of. And here's a JSON payload that each artifact author writes that describes that mapping. So now, and I'll, I'll pick on Wonderfrog here, uh, if at uh, JFrog, if they want to say, actually, that's not a good, that's an example of something else. As ACR, I only want to show media types that uh, allow media types to be pushed that I know of, so that I can make sure that my vulnerability scanners work and so forth. Well, if Marky Mark comes along and that becomes interesting enough and they push that to uh, the artifacts repo, the well, as a well-known type, I as ACR can import that type and now I support uh, Marky Mark. But all I needed was that media type. The I don't have to parse the config object to uh, know that that's a Marky Mark with this special logo. If I as ACR, well, I'll actually use uh, Quay because Quay does this today and, and I think JFrog does, but I'll, I'll use Quay. Quay does spend more time to, and, and um, uh, Jimmy has talked about this, they want to have very uh, great support for different types that they support in, in their app registry product. So they invest in every type. So they might decide that they do parse the config object of Marky Mark because they want to show um, specialized content when viewing that type in the Quay registry. Um, we as ACR, we're like, hey, we don't care, just put whatever you want in, we just want to show the icon. So I think what I'd like to do with the spec is say, distribution is optional, whether you want to parse the config object, it's, it's totally up to you, um, but you must support null config objects so that every artifact author doesn't have to submit one even when they don't need it. Um, I'll pause for thoughts. So, so in essence, you're saying you don't need this, this config blob, but. We use the string to identify, it. like the media type says what it is, but the config object itself can be null. Um, and we know this works because if I pull Docker distribution and run it locally, as we talked about in Auras, it does just work. Um, right. And that's actually what we wound up following the pattern in ACR. Uh, but I know that most we, registry we know as a registry provider, right, that this media type is valid. Right. We just know the media type is valid, but from a registry perspective, I should not have to validate or parse the config object. Not if you're willing to treat it as everything. I don't want to treat it special as a blob, right? Right. And like I said, you know, that's where uh, Wonder Frog, you know, uh, Casey and Quay, I'll, I'll, I'll start to pigeonhole some. They might want to very uh, highlight every artifact type and they invest time because that's one of the value adds that they provide. Um, in fact, for JFrog Artifactory, they might go to the approach even further and says their product allows importing because a lot of the, what, what they do is they have on-prem. So customer A and customer B 
have completely different artifact types that they support. In fact, I always like using Coke and Pepsi because they're the traditional, I don't want Coke and Pepsi knowing about each other conflicting, is Coke might support a, a artifact type that is unique to Coke organization. Right. And so they should be able to import something that is only unique to them and they can re represent it in their implementation of uh, JFrog Artifactory, but Pepsi has something completely different. From the JFrog Artifact product, they just have a way to import media types and represent them. It's up to each install to um, you know, manage that because it's just part of the spec. Exactly. Cool. So, I forgot how I got there. There was a question around the config object or something. Oh, so oh, uh, what would Docker Hub have to, to do to add this? So from a Docker Hub perspective, it would be you'd have to be able to support additional media types. Whether you opt into each one and there's a process by which people submit them or you, or they, you pull them from the artifact repo or not is a conversation. Um, so, but today I wasn't able to push anything other than uh, application slash vnd dot oci dot image dot config dot v1 plus json um, so that we need more flexibility there and if even when i pushed an oci object which actually it's why i guess i was gonna say even when i pushed an oci object if i try to give it a no config object it failed but to be fair and if oci image is a container image it, it does need a, um, a config object to be valid. So um, I think there really is, uh, Docker Hub would have to support additional media types and for each media type, it can decide whether it should be null or not. Right, or at least some plugin model where you could add additional media type with validators. So right, right. At, at the artifacts layer, such that you know, any any new type that gets registered at, at artifacts and approved by said group, you know, would have a validator and then could be imported and used by the registry to take a look at, you know, this blob that's coming down to make sure it's not something else besides what they say it is, right? In the media yep. type. I, I'm a little concerned about just these things just being becoming ad hoc, and I'm just talking out loud. Okay. When you say validator, what does that mean? Because in the artifacts spec, I did go and create a schema validator for um, defining an artifact type. Yeah, I, I mean, how do you know the blob is what you say it is in the media type? Okay. So they would have to support a schema of their config. But when you say validator, because not all registries are written in Go, um, I, I struggle. One of the things I love about the spec is that it's it is agnostic of implementation and it's allowed people to have the flexibility to do what they want to do is a validator more than a schema or you think there's actually code that registries could run it could be as it could be just a schema yes but then then we're you know we're getting into schemas and we don't really specify those well the, the thought of the and go, and go by the way isn't very good at schema <laughs> Yeah, if you look at the uh, specs, uh, the PRs, you'll see that each artifact author can specify, can optionally specify a schema for their config object. The same way they say, you know, a Helm chart has this media type at the manifest, and here is the media types for the layers. Yeah, um, I think it would be valid to use schema for, you know, non-Go language, Go languages, and then maybe provide some alternative uh, tooling for the registries that are implemented in Go, right? Yeah. Or you could just link to uh, some, you know, some other code, Python or whatnot. Okay. You know, pick, pick something. I mean, I'm just saying we need we need some way to validate, right? Yep. Uh, these blobs, um, just so that you, you can warrant to clients, right, that are doing a pull that these are these are what they say they are, and not some, you know, something else entirely. So if you look at the, the spec PR 13, I do say that when an artifact declares what it is, it says, here's the media type for the manifest and here's the media types for the layers. Right. It, um, and there's some other stuff in there as well, but from a, it, it, there should be enough there that a registry shouldn't care because we should just treat them as arbitrary blobs. Um, and because the, we're using the manifest schema, we know how to do garbage collection and all that kind of stuff that we really care about. But 
the details, I don't like, I don't really care from a registry perspective. I don't really give a flip what's in the actual layers of the container image. I just know how to dedupe them and serve them and so forth. Um, as a image scanner, you know, like Aqua Twistlock and all the others, they do care, but they're going to go to the image spec. They're going to go to the helm spec. They're going to go to the singularity spec and figure out that when they scan the registry and they see a media type that says singularity, oh, I know how to do that. And they take what they've learned from the singularity uh, repo and you know spec to figure out what they do around what's in those actual blobs. Okay, I think it's also possible to say that we would have two different types of artifacts, artifacts that are fully specified and parsable by the registries if they you know, so yep. want. Uh, and then others, yeah. would, other registries that would just, you know, ad hoc allow any type that is not in this base list of types, right, that are well defined to, to be, you know, brought in. Yeah. Right. They, people can push unknowns or new things, as a, and that's the, the choice I was trying to say is like, we might stay open. It's really where we're at already, correct? Well, ACR is open. Um, Hub and I think Quay and others don't support, don't let you submit other things that aren't known. Okay. And I think that's exactly what we want to be able to support is let that be a registry choice. The problem is until we get the spec approved and more eyes on it, um, there's no way for uh, ECR, GCR to uh, know what exactly makes up a singularity image. If they want to open up the media types just for singularity, let's say, they don't, we don't have a way to know what those layers are. Uh, sorry, what those media types are. So that's why I'm trying to get the artifacts PR, you know, continue to get more and more progress on it so right. that those can be more published. Like right now, Singularity and Helm, they've got some temporary media types, um, but I think we want to help them validate, nope, this is the affirmed one. By the way, make a PR on the artifacts distro to say here's what your well-known type is. And now various registries can import that and be like, oh, I can now claim singularity support. Um, cool. There was one other thing, uh, shoot, I just lost. Oh, I know what it was. One of the things that I've seen some confusion around, and I, I think having a couple of you guys here um, would be a perfect to help me clarify this or affirm what I've been thinking about it, the media type application slash VND dot OCI dot image dot config. If we see that, I'm saying that that absolutely is a container image. You can absolutely do container D run, Docker run on it. If you should never push something that you can't do container D run or Docker run that has that, uses that media type. Yeah, I mean, I, I would say it's, I mean, a config is linked very specifically to the OCI runtime spec, right? I mean, it's an actual run C configuration. So, yeah, it seems, I don't know what use case you'd ever have that you'd have a config JSON for run C and not be able to use it to run a container. Okay. Because early on, um, even in the aura, even some people that were working on auras, there was some confusion. The assumption was if the media type said OCI image, that that was what Helm and Singularity and others were. And I realized that there was some confusion there. In fact, there's some PRs on auras to make sure the default isn't OCI image. The default should be unknown. Um, because I really want to avoid uh, the problem of people pushing things in and now the container scanners and the container runtimes start pulling tags that they think should work, but of course wouldn't because they're some other random type. Mm, yeah. So just unless other people were thinking that OCI image was supposed to be the generic thing, I'm suggesting it is a very specific thing and, um, and that should help. Like one of, I kept on hearing the concerns around well, if I push all these other things to an OCI registry, what happens to all the container tools? It's like, as long as the container tools validate that the media type says OCI image, then they should be fine. Um, if somebody else pushes something else that says OCI image, then um, that, that's the failure point. They're basically being an imposter.
Okay. Yeah. Good discussion. So, because you guys are fairly regular and we've got people that we haven't been able to get fairly regular because of time zones, can we approach the question of do we want to move this to earlier in the day so Europe and Asia can join? Yeah, I guess the, um, yeah, you're right. I guess this is effectively kind of the regulars, you know, usually we have eight to 12 people, um, a lot of the same group. Uh, I, I guess it's either that or an alternating time that means no, no one is ever stuck with a time that they hate. You only hate one out of every other calls or something. <laughs> Who on the call is on West Coast that would probably be impacted the most? I mean, I'll raise my hand. Actually, I'm not sure where John and Derek are. I assume you guys are in West Coast. They're West Coast. Derek is for sure. I'm West Coast. Tianan is Las Vegas. J Frog's West Coast. Okay. How early is acceptable? I've actually heard people say, I'm actually up, but I'm taking my kids to school. What would be, it seemed that when we did the last one where we got Europe and Asia, was that seven or eight o'clock, Phil? I can't remember. I was actually on the East Coast when we did that call. That, that was seven, because it was 10 my time. Yeah, yeah, because it was 10 p.m. Asia. Yeah. Seven's not too bad because if you are having to address kids, it typically happens at eight. Oh, so it actually is earlier than the kids, so it's not for yeah, some. It, yeah, it just happens to be that some start right around there, so wouldn't be able to do the whole hour for some of us. Phil, do you want to do your voting thing where you sent out that uh, thing for some yeah. And maybe... Yeah. The, yeah, we can do a doodle poll. Maybe put uh, three or four options, you know, the seven o'clock, the eight o'clock, nine o'clock. Yeah. And maybe even suggest alternating too, like that might be an option. Yeah. Yeah. The only, the only annoyance there is sometimes it gets hard to keep track of which week we're on, you know, which time frame, but Amy can, uh, Our are kind of messed up right now. Depending on where you look, we say different things anyway. <laughs> yeah. I've, I've tried to fix squash most of them down to that one entry, but yeah, you're right. Um, and Amy, Amy now holds the magical uh, Google calendar entry, which obviously can be customized to show up at the right time on people's calendars. Assuming technology actually works. Generally, it seems to be okay now. Is there anything direct that we need to fix like today? No, yeah, I think the Google Calendar is set to weekly at this slot, so that that currently is correct. Okay. Uh, does it show the right dial-in information? It yes. sure does, because I got yeah. pulled away and just got pulled back in, so all is well. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, All the Kubernetes me big meetings sort of happen at 10 a.m. West Coast time. You get a lot of Europeans on. Oh, so it does work for Europe, so maybe it's just saying, yeah, make to make Asia the, the, the scapegoat. But is, what, they, what they'll do is they'll have a, you know summary meetings in the evenings for Asia. Okay, all right, cool. Anything else? No, I think we're uh. Good for this week. Um, yeah, I will try and send out that doodle poll and see if we can get a broader set of folks uh, responding to that and then we can make a decree or proposal or whatever from there. <laughs> and if we just get the you know LGTMs on the catalog spec, we can tuck that away, get closer to 1.0 and some eyes on the uh, artifact specs, I will I don't, I won't have time this week, but I have time. I should have time next week to make the next round of changes to it. Yeah, the, the good news is in 
the last 50 minutes, you've gotten two LGTMs, so. Okay. Progress is there. <laughs> All right, so I will upload the recording as usual, and then uh, we will, actually, next week, I'm on a plane at this exact slot, so assuming we do have a meeting in this slot, uh, obviously, Zoom works without me, which is nice. Uh, but if we get some agenda items, we'll just make sure somebody's kind of tasked with that. So. Okay. I'm actually at a HackCon thing next week, so I'll probably be out, um, which I will just do a quick plug and just say the stuff we're doing around the OCI and artifacts, we are getting good progress in the substream software bill of materials conversation going up to uh, an ISO standard and others. So um, it's, it's having some, it, it's going well and I'll, as I have more, I'm trying to get more information to share more broadly and not just, I won't tell anybody and it doesn't ask, but I'm trying to get, um, we're trying to get to the point where we have information published so we could point people to it. Um, so it's kind of built on some of the SPDX stuff and others, but uh, that part's going well. And um, there's some, there's some value to being in a standards body and trying to get this stuff moving in a good direction. So. I'll continue to post more information as I can share. Or I have okay. to. Sounds good. Yep. All right. Thanks for.